Good morning, everybody. Morning, Judy. Hey, Commissioner Oliver, I uh, heard you on the radio this morning. You did a great job. Just thought I'd give you a shout out. Oh, boy. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was good. You were selling hope, and uh, I love it. <laughs> Commissioner Fitzgerald, does okay. that you listen to that smart radio? <laughs> Only when I know smart people are going to be on it. Yeah. So <laughs> I dialed in at the right time this morning. I hate I missed that, Tyrone. Oh, uh, you're good. You didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I see the time is 10 o'clock. So I'll go ahead and call our meeting to order and uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. and taking time out of your schedules and uh here we are 2022 well into it you know um hope everybody's having a good year staying healthy and uh handling all their affairs as safely as they can i uh, would ask everyone if they would please mute if you're if you're not speaking that way we don't have the background noise and uh, uh aura russell who takes down a record of our minutes from the meeting and uh more easily do that so we, she doesn't have that background noise. So if you'll do that for me, I would appreciate it. So, uh, and now, uh, Ms. Russell, I'll call on you if you don't mind to uh, go ahead and do our roll call. Good morning, Good morning. Ms. Board members. Uh-oh, we got some feedback. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I'm gonna call the roll. Um, Terry Barnard. I'm right here. Candace Rose, she is unable to make it. She's not feeling well today. Jacqueline Bunn. Present. Keith Elliott. Sonia Feeling Game, she is unable to make it. She has another um, meeting she has to be in attendance with. Judy Fitzgerald. I'm present. Jimmy Kitchens. Nick Norton. I'm here. Tyrone Oliver. I'm here. Steve Queen. I'm here. Timothy Ward. Mr. Ward will be joining us shortly. He's um, getting into his office. Um, I got. I just got that message. And Amy Radley for the AG's office. Uh, Chairman Queen, you do have a quorum. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, I just saw James step up. Good to see you this morning, James. And uh, would I would invite you to uh, deliver our invocation, if you wouldn't mind. Good morning. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. We ask all we do, all we say, God, you be glorified and that it will be for the betterment of our agency and for the state of Georgia. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, James. Appreciate that. So, All right. We'll go ahead and get our agenda started. Should be a pretty short meeting, pretty short agenda. Uh, most of the uh, uh, commissioner's command staff are at uh, are Forsyth for a BPOT graduation or a, a basic training officer graduation. Um, so they'll, they'll be popping in and out of the, uh, uh, the screen as they deliver their reports. Um, we'll move on to the uh, proposed agenda that Aura sent out. Does everyone have a copy of that? Have you had a chance to review it? Does anyone have any questions, additions, or deletions to it? Chairman Queen, he failed right, to just join. Mark that. Good to have you, Sheriff Evelyn. Okay. If there are any. Uh, if there are no uh, questions about the agenda or any changes, I'll uh, accept a motion to uh, accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Uh, I move to accept the agenda. Okay. Moved by Mr. Barnard and second by Ms. Fitzgerald. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Are hearing none, the agenda is approved. Okay, moving on. Everyone received a copy of the minutes from our uh, December the 16th uh, meeting. Uh, if you've had a chance to review those, if there are any questions or changes or comments about those, I'll uh, entertain those now. Okay, if you're none, I'll be glad to accept a motion to accept the, mean, uh, the minutes of that meeting. 
Power on, I'll make the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Oliver. I have a second. Second motion. Second by Mr. Barnard. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay. Hearing none, those minutes from the December 16th meeting are approved and accepted. Okay, great. And I see that uh, Commissioner Nell is uh, chomping at the bit and standing at the podium ready to go. So, good morning, Commissioner. Hey, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity to be with you this morning. I appreciate the accommodation to be virtual. As uh, Chairman Queen mentioned, we do have a basic class going on. Uh, we have a graduation today, uh, so it affords us opportunity to be here as always, to uh, extend our support and appreciation to them. Uh, as you know, with the legislative session, it's kind of, we like to shelter in place because you never know what's coming our way. So my report is going to be rather brief. We actually have no legislative items that would directly impact our business uh, this session. So in that regard, it has been a, a light session. Uh, from a budget standpoint, uh, we fared uh, very well. I think the big $5,000 cost of living increase uh, that uh, was initiated by the governor and fully supported by the legislature. And we certainly appreciate that. That's been a long time coming. Uh, and, and we're always appreciative for them to recognize the support of the hard work being done. Uh, we also uh, were approved for 65 replacement vehicles. Uh, many of you know that the, the vehicle, that's really the office for the officers and uh, we replace them when they hit the nine year mark or about 135,000 miles. So we will have new vehicles coming. I wanted to give a, a compliment to our uh, budget office and finance office. We were worried about whether or not we were going to be able to take delivery of those because as you know, with the not just the pandemic, but the supply chain issue and computer chips, but uh, they work magic to make it happen, and we were able to actually secure those orders, and we'll be taking delivery of them. So good, good work on their part. Recently, uh, we hosted, we being the state of Georgia, uh, hosted the American Probation Parole Association Conference here in Atlanta. Uh, I just want to commend everybody that had a part in that. I know, Chairman Queen, you were able to to be part of it, but all the other agencies, uh, DCS, GDC, State Board of Pardons and Paroles, and uh, DJJ did a phenomenal job. And uh, I just wanted to thank them for, for uh, and recognizing how they made Georgia shine. Uh, we will have the Georgia Professional Association Community Supervision Conference will be coming up uh, in August. I'm sure R will be sending the information to the board members. We would love to have you join us in Savannah. Uh, that is a conference that is geared specifically to the work of community supervision, and they do a fantastic job. Uh, speaking of fantastic job, I uh, can't help but to brag about the work being done in the field. Uh, cases, uh, case loads, excuse me, continue to be uh, lower than ever. But as I always say, even though that's the case, they're still far too high. Uh, relatively speaking, we still continue to lead the nation in a number of folks under supervision and the link that they are on uh, for supervision. But despite all of those challenges, uh, we still have an 87 percent rate. Uh, so a lot of times people will talk about the one off cases or the two or three that go bad. Uh, they talk about the number that were uh, committed homicides under supervision. Well, relatively speaking, that represented less than 1% of our active population. Now, don't get me wrong, one is too many, uh, but I think it has to be uh, taken in a, in a relative manner. So uh, the work continues there, and uh, there'll be more updates here with Director Stanley and Holsey and Lewis and, of course, April Ross with Commission on Family Violence. But I want to thank each of you for your continued support. Uh, it's a privilege and honor working with you, uh, and we recognize your support is critical to our success. So I wanted to thank you for that, and I'll certainly entertain any questions that you may have at this time. Thank you, Commissioner Nell. Does anyone have any questions for uh, Commissioner Nell? Okay. Great. Hearing Very good. Appreciate that. 
Okay. All right, well, we'll move on to the committee reports. And first up is uh, Director of Field Operations, Patrick Palsy. We'll wait for Patrick to step up. There he is. Morning, Patrick. Oh, let me take me off mute here. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Very good. Happy, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Glad to see everyone this morning. Um, as Michael stated, we have a BCLT graduation, BCSOT graduation today, so I'm going to be brief as well. Uh, I'll start out first by just talking about the great work that our team members are doing in the field division. So in December, we had six of our officers to graduate from our basic mandate law enforcement training class. Uh, those graduates are members of our task force officers teams um, assigned to one of our federal law enforcement partners and members of our immediate response team. Um, those graduates are Officer Jeffrey Mellendorf, um, Officer Elijah McAllister, Officer Kevin Sharp, Officer John Robinson, Officer Crystal Hunter, and Officer Pace Whitaker. And I'd like to take note of special rec rec recognition to Officer McAllister, who was the recipient of the academic award of his class, and also Officer Hunter, who was the recipient of the top gun award in their class. You know, it's always great to see our people stand out among others, other peers. So glad for those, those individuals. Um, also in January, we had our officer, uh, LaKelsey Dobson of the ROM circuit, received our Video Spotlight award, award. Our Video Spotlight Award is a DCS award given to the officer that demonstrates the highest standard of person-centered supervision uh, through to VSP skills and effectively addressing the risk and needs of those supervis supervisees we have uh, each quarter. Uh, the recipient of this award is determined by reviewing numerous video interactions conducted by officers each month and is awarded on a quarterly basis. And I, I'd like to say congratulations to Officer Dobson for that. Um, also in January, we had Officer Dietrich Clark of the Southern Circuit, who was awarded the Officer of the Year for the by the Moultrie Rotary um, Club. Um, I think we have the best officers um, in any agency myself, but it's always good to see that our, they're, they're acknowledged by others outside the agency as well. So we're glad to see that Officer um, Dietrich Clark won that award. Um, last month, we had Officer um, Kent Young of our Special Operations Unit made a presentation to the Prosecuting Attorney Council's Victim Witness Assistant Personnel Conference, and that's a lot to say in one time, but uh, we had them present to go to that group and he presented information on DCS and how we collaborate with our victim assistance offices to ensure that our victims are heard in regards to our court proceedings. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback from that presentation. And again, it's always good to get DCS's story out to our partners in the field. Um, February 1st, we opened our uh, grant funded DRC in Doherty Circuit. Uh, this DRC was previously in the Southwestern Circuit, but was that it could be better utilized in the Doherty circuit. And just in a, over a month and a half of being set up in the Doherty circuit, we already have more participants than we had in the Southwestern circuit. So we're doing a great job there. Um, There's gonna be a lot of um, good information that we can provide to those supervisees in that Doherty circuit. So I'm looking, looking forward to more information on that one. Um, and just last week, we had 19 of our officers complete what we call our certified peer counseling course at Vogel State Park. And these officers are now certified to provide support to our officers that are involved in a critical uh, critical incident. Um, it's not exactly counseling that they provide, but it's a lot of times when you have someone involved in a critical incident, they want to hear from someone that's on their level, someone that's that's appeared to them. And these officers are now certified to conduct that. Uh, we previously had eight officers I'm moving that total up with another 19. We're sufficiently able to provide any type of services needed to our officers. And not just DCS officers, but our officers have also been called out several times to assist other law enforcement agencies when they had critical incidences as well. And lastly, for me, I'd like to acknowledge our newest chief community supervision officer, Elton Edwards. Chief Edwards is the new chief of the Chattahoochee Circuit that's in Columbus and is taken over for Davida Haddon, who was promoted to the director of field operations support. And with that, I will say that concludes my report for the field division, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. We don't have great. Appreciate the report, no. Patrick. Thank you. And y'all have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to the um, uh, reentry services report. And uh, Ms. Michelle Stanley, we'll wait for her to step up to the podium. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. So, Chairman and the rest of the board, just a few updates 
from reentry services. Forgive the nasalness. Um, sinuses are killing me this morning with the pollen. So it's going to be a long spring and summer. Um, but we're geared up for the month of April, which is National Second Chance Month. We're looking forward to celebrating reentry week, the week of April 28th. During this time, we want to shine a light on the importance of reentry and the responsibility we all have, as well as highlight effort across the state in the work of reentry. Just in a collaborating with our Office of External Affairs, we're kicking off a social media campaign during the month of April, and we're titling that What Reentry Means to Me. And basically, that would consist of several did you know facts about reentry, as well as we plan to highlight some success stories of supervisees that we've been able to help, as well as highlight some of our partners that provide the support um, for our population. Also in conjunction with Emory University Candler School of Theology, we will take part in an informational session titled, Taking Their Place Among Us is an event on prison reentry and collateral consequences in Georgia. But not only just that informal session, the students wanted to get involved and want to be able to give back. And they are planning a community fair where they're collecting items that will be provided to the Stone Mountain supervisees to assist them with some barriers to transportation and employment. So they're looking to collect and provide some art passes, some gas cars, some hygiene items, clothes, things of that nature, just to help them with employment. The reentry team will also be participating during the month of April in a number of training events being hosted by the Department of Justice National Reentry Resource Center, as well as other training opportunities throughout the month to continue to sharpen our saw, as well as continuing to try and implement best practices. To close out the month, we will host a reentry day of service, which is going to be a community resource fair in collaboration with our community partners, as well as our faith-based partners. And that event will happen on Thursday, April the 28th. And it's our plan to hold that day of service event throughout all 10 districts during the same time. A partnership that we have been ecstatic about has been with the Gateway Community Partnership with the Division of Family and Children's Services. We entered into an MOU that allows the community coordinator statewide to assist supervisees with submitting and renewing their application for SNAP benefits. Um, through this partnership, services offered by the community coordinator will consist of informational handouts, paper applications as requested, access to the call center, online self-service to apply and renew benefits. We'll be there to help those individuals um, walk through that process if they need assistance and being able to take care of that when we need them during intake. Also during um, the month of April, you know, we partner with the Morehouse School of Medicine with their College Behind Bars Day, where they actually screened an event um, that was a four-part documentary series that looked at challenges of education, college degrees, and transitioning back in the communities. Although that documentary was filmed in a maximum secure prison in New York, we were able to have dialogue during that session as to just how some of those things also affect individuals here in Georgia. So we were pleased to be invited to be a part of that um, great day. Just a few housing updates. We continue to stay the course with building capacity to support those in need of housing through RPH as well as utilizing our Thor directory. Last year during this time, I reported out that we had roughly 77 Thor providers. As of today, we currently have 93 Thor providers and we continue to stay the course to ensure that we're providing housing for individuals that need to transition. We set a goal at the end of last fiscal year to increase our bed availability through providers to be 100 providers. We're well on the way to surpass that and understanding that this effort is greatly needed. Just a few highlights from our community coordinators around the state. Um, recognizing transportation is one of the many barriers individuals face when transitioning, particularly in our rural areas. Well, our community coordinator, Torsha Lanier and Doherty, Circuit actually established a relationship with Ready Trans. It's a local transition company to provide discount transportation services to those under supervision. Um, they're charging those individuals just a rate of $30 for the week, and that's unlimited rides to help them with office visit, courts date, court dates, counseling programs, as well as um, going back and forth to work. Also in that same effort, community coordinator Robert Simmons in the Eastern Circuit partnered with Union Mission, Inc., and held a community employment resource fair. He had roughly about 10 providers on site 
um, not just only employment, but also healthcare providers, substance abuse providers, as well as mental health providers, just to have a one-stop shop for those individuals that came out to participate in that fair. As a result of that event, two partners um, are actually now every Wednesday um, to be available after intake to be able to provide employment services to those individuals that have just recently released. Um, it's our thoughts that if we can go ahead and take care of the needs of individuals when we have them at one time, we're hopefully setting them up to be a little bit more as they transition back. No, that was quick, but just a few updates. Um, board chair members, I can take any questions at this time that can lose, concludes my report. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Always a, a great report and uh, always very impressed with all that y'all do. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, going on our agenda to Mr. Tim on the misdemeanor probation oversight committee good morning mr chairman uh board members uh, pleasure to be with you this morning uh, we're pleased to announce that our uh, 2022 entity annual registration process has been completed uh, currently there are 71 entities registered uh, 50 of those are governmental agencies and 21 private entities uh, at this time there's 745 registered individuals there's a total of 790 courts uh, being served. And I want to thank R. Russell for overseeing and completing this very tedious project in a timely manner. Our virtual training program uh, continues to see uh, positive feedback and be well uh, supported by the providers. Since February 2nd, uh, we've held 21 sessions with a total attendance of 282 and 20 different providers have participated to this point uh, this early in the year. In addition to R, our current team of compliance monitors uh, Jim and Jordan Holloway, the Doria De uh, Dorsey, Alicia Smalley, John Cord, Stephen Phillips have begun spe uh, scheduling their compliance reviews for the year, requesting cases, case review activities. Uh, we also recently added Kim Wood to our team, and her training is coming along smoothly. Also, uh, I want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge the contribution of LaDonna Varner Burney uh, to our team over the years. Uh, LaDonna was an original member of uh, MPOU and has played an integral role uh, in our team since the very beginning. Uh, she was recently promoted to uh, the position of policy administrator in legal services, and uh, we're happy for her. Uh, we're certain uh, that she'll continue to be a valuable member of our DCS family in this new position, and we're hopeful to uh, fill that uh, her vacant spot in a timely manner. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this concludes uh, my report, and we'd be happy to respond to any questions you or the board may have. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate that report. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Lewis? No? Okay. Fantastic. All right. We'll move on to uh, Mrs. Ross's report on the Georgia Commission on Family Violence. Good morning, April. Good morning, Chairman Queen. Good morning, DTS board members. Um, thank you, as always, for the opportunity to present on the work of the Georgia Commission. Um, I'll also be very brief, even though as a lawyer, you usually can't trust that coming out of my mouth, but I, I'll, I'll try to keep to my word this time around. Um, so we'll see. Um, I do want to first thank uh, Tim, as always, the MPOU trainings that he just mentioned. Uh, they have included GCFB for the last couple of years, and we are very happy to be a part of those trainings and uh, bring the officers information about and the key issues. Uh, that may be impactful for the work they do. So we'll be um, participating as a part of that training. I think our first training with uh, MPOU starts next week. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. We also released uh, in February our male involvement report. And I'll say that I'm really excited about this report. It is the first of, um, of its kind that DCS, I mean, that GCFB has done. Uh, we have focused on men uh, as victims um, in, in a more holistic way around uh, how in, domestic violence impacts them. Uh, you know, there's a sometimes a, a tendency to want to um, fall into the, the thinking that sometimes men are always and only offenders of domestic violence, but that's not always true. And even when they perpetrate violence, there are things that uh, may be underlying causes uh, that are important for us to address to help maybe in some of these issues. We know that in murder-suicide um, incidents, uh, to me, I always believe that there's two victims 
and two victims' families that are impacted. And so if we can do more things to address male suicide, um, male perpetration of uh, domestic violence, but also work better as a state to understand male victimization. I think that's means, that means we're actually uh, doing what we should be doing. And so I'm really excited about that male involvement report is the first, um, it, uh, but it won't be the last. And so I'm, if you have an opportunity, please take a look at it, read it and, um, and share some feedback if you have any um, with, um, with what you find in the report. I'm also excited that we're reviving some of our work with the faith community. Um, several years ago, DCS, I mean, apparently I'm getting our agencies all combined into one. We work great together and I've just, GCFV had a, an initiative with the Faith Trust Institute several years ago. Uh, and while that was great work and, and a lot of excitement came out of it, it sort of fizzled out. Uh, and so we're looking to really revive that because we know that a lot of times when people outcry um, about victimization and what they're experiencing at home, one of the first places they tend to go is to their faith leaders. And so we've got to make sure that we're involving them in the conversation, uh, helping them to be better equipped to make sure that they're giving the right response and the right services and support to the members of their congregation to them uh, with these types of issues. Uh, we've also got the 2022 the Family Violence Fact Sheet that will be coming out very soon. Uh, we'll release that and put it on our website. So if you have an opportunity, take a look at that as well. Um, we are grateful to the governor uh, and to the to the state legislators for the for the raise um, that that was approved in this year's budget. Uh, it certainly will help the members of my team, a very small team that does a lot of hard work. Uh, and so we're grateful for that as well. And then lastly, I'll just mention our conference again. The theme this year is widening the lens creating an inclusive response to family violence. And so we're really looking at talking about those marginalized populations of, uh, of victims that we don't normally um, focus on and, 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 and consider as much in our response. Um, so, and, and, and that again includes male victims uh, as well as LGBTQ, elder, um, teens and youth uh, and others. So if you're interested, the dates of the conference are September 25th through 26th, 28th. We'll be in Athens, Georgia at the Classic Center. Seems we may have lost uh, April's connection there. Yes, sir. Give it just a minute, see if she can reconnect. I think she was almost done though. Can you hear me? My yes. apologies, my computer just uh, completely just shut down. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but as I was saying, just the conference, and this is the final point, um, just wanna thank you again, again to DCS, to Commissioner Nail uh, this year. Commissioner Nail and DCF has, have agreed to support uh, our conference by sponsoring the 50 DV liaison officers to attend uh, the conference. And it's really important because even though we're able to offer scholarships every year through our, our relationship and partnership with CJCC, uh, as some of you may or may not know, the DV organizations this year have been in a bit of a crisis because of a, a, a severe funding uh, cut that may be occurring to the VOCA programs um, and which seriously impacts their ability to not only uh, maintain their normal personnel, but keep up the things that they normally do, including training. So this uh, support from DCS certainly allows us to give more uh, do domestic violence advocates and sexual assault advocates an opportunity to potentially get a scholarship to attend. Um, DCS has been a, a, an amazing and supportive partner. We want to thank uh, you all for everything that you do to support GCFD and our work. Uh, and certainly thank you so much to Commissioner Nail for always being uh, um, a, a tremendous uh, partner and someone willing to uh, step up and help wherever, whenever the call is made. Thank you so much. And that concludes my report. I'll entertain any questions. Does anyone have any uh, questions for Ms. Ross? No? Thank you, April. Appreciate that. Hope you get your technical issues worked out. So thanks for bouncing back so quickly.
Okay, we'll move on. Next agenda item is old business. Uh, I don't have any listed on my agenda and I know of none. Is there any that any of the members have to bring forward? No, okay. And we'll move on to new business items. There is just one and uh, I see that uh, General Counsel not to step to the podium and this is a resolution for a property surplus in Thomas County. So I'll let James present that. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> This resolution is to authorize the commissioner to take the necessary steps to obtain the custody and control of property that was surplus by DBHDD, Thomasville, Georgia. This property we use for a DRC office and also a day reporting center. Um, does anybody have any questions? Any members have any questions? Uh, Ms. Russell did send out the information on the resolution as well as uh, the supporting documentation if you've had a chance to, to look at that. Okay. Uh, hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion from one of the members to, to approve this resolution. Move to approve the resolution. A motion to approve by Ms. Bunn. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Barnard. Uh, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Mr. Chairman, we will have that to you, please. So if each board member will be watching, uh, waiting for that, we'll have it to you electronically, hopefully today. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. If uh, there's no other business, that completes our agenda. Want to? Again, thank everyone for joining and participating. I did see uh, Commissioner Ward join us. So uh, welcome, Commissioner Ward. Glad you were able to, to join us there. And uh, hearing no other comments or questions, I'll call the meeting adjourned. Thank you for everyone's attendance. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Mr. Queen, the meeting was adjourned at 1031.